Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, hello, John. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you, Art, and thank you all for joining us. So, today we have a special guest who's going to blow your mind. I blow think. your mind. I love that phrase, Art. That's the perfect phrase because we're going to be introduced to, get this, the brain whisperer. Yes, the brain whisperer. <laughs> now, not only is he a successful author and lecturer, he shares the brain science, uh, new brain science that helps people transform their lives and improve their uh, their focus, their clarity, and negative thinking. We can all use a little bit of that. Well, not improve but, their negative thinking. No, he ends their negative ends, thinking and ends, improves okay. their focus. Good. Yeah, and get this. He has an inspirational story that we want to share about his act too. Now, that's that's really why we're here. Let's meet Stephen R. Campbell. Stephen, good morning. Uh, hello. Thank you for having me. This Hi, is Steve. going to be so much fun. Hi, Art and John. Oh, so, uh, John, I just want to say to uh, Steve, uh, and Steve and I had a little preliminary discussion last week. We were fooling around with the uh, technical stuff. Uh, is that I was a great fan of uh, reading books uh, after taking the Dale Carnegie sales course and how to win friends and influence people early in my career. <laughs> of an Emil, Emil Kue, whose uh, phrase was, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And yeah. uh, I've always seemed to have a positive attitude, but sometimes I wish I knew how to get back into it when mm -hmm. uh, the world hit us. So uh, I really enjoyed reading your book, but um, uh, there's more, more to Steve than, than brain whispering. Well, Steve, I, you know, we do want to talk to you about your second act, how you mm -hmm. transformed yourself uh, reinvented yourself in your 60s. But before we get there, I think it's important for people to know what you're doing today. A little, let's okay. find out a little bit about this brain whisperer thing. And, and, and as Art said, uh, your positive thinking uh, methods and all. What do you do? <laughs> well, I'm really a professional speaker. And before COVID, I was literally traveling around the world giving this amazing message, a little bit of which I'll share with you today, to my audiences. And uh, when I'm done, the last word that I always say in my presentation is, wow, and I say it very, very um, quietly, and the whole audience is like stunned. They're just sitting there looking at me. They can't believe what they've heard because of the things that I share with them. So it just gets me so excited that I'm so excited that you contacted me. So this is gonna be really neat. How is it that you help people with your, with your lectures? I help people by sharing with them three principal discoveries which cognitive psychologists made since the early 1960s. The first is that the brain believes what we tell them without question, no arguments, which is scary and wonderful. The scary part is when you say, this is really hard, the brain says, okay, and then looks for ways to make it hard. That's the scary part. But there's a wonderful part. When we say this is really easy, your brain immediately says, oh, okay, and then becomes obsessed with finding ways to make it easy. That's number one. Number two is that everything we can do today is primarily, not completely, but primarily based on what we say to ourselves about ourselves today. Today, when Dr. Albert Ellis shared this in the book called The Guide to Rational Living back in the early 60s, psychology said, no, 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 the way you are today is based on your childhood, unresolved childhood conflicts, that was Freudianism or behaviorism. And Dr. Albert Ellis said, you know what, they're all true. Because what you are saying to yourself today is going to determine how well you can do something or how well you can't. It all comes down to your self-talk today. Third, when you replace the negative messages that you're giving yourself with positive messages, unfortunately, most of what we say to ourselves is negative stuff until you learn this, your brain then rewires itself. This is called neuroplasticity. And those negative messages over time become a part of the way you think. And then in time, they become a part of who you are. So we are far more in control of our lives than we ever imagined that we could be. 
And this has only been since the last 10 or 12 or 20 years that we've discovered this. That's exciting. Well, I, I can see how this would help people because you can yes. apply this science really yeah. Uh, yeah. to almost anything in life, including right. uh, things like weight loss and uh, grieving, grief. Uh, how you feel about well, yourself. Yeah, yes. how you feel Absolutely. about yourself. It sounds to me like you are a major self-help guru. Is that a fair... I've become one. Um, I'm now traveling around the world and audiences are looking for me because of the very simple message that I give them. And I think the most ex one of the most exciting messages that I share is that our feelings about ourselves don't come from how we were raised or they don't come from events in our lives. They come from what we believe about how we were raised and what we believe about the events in our life. Our feelings are coming from COVID. They're coming from what we're saying about COVID. Why is that so exciting? Because we can replace what we're saying. Notice I don't use the word change. I never use the word change because the brain doesn't want you to change. The brain hates change. The brain's job is to keep you safe, to keep you risk-free, but the brain loves to create new things. So what I share with people is rather than changing these things, don't try to change it, replace it. Create new ways of thinking, lock onto that, and the brain says, okay, because it believes everything you tell it. And over time, that new way of thinking becomes a part of who you are and how you face things. Well, what a, terrific, what? What a, what a terrific message, because basically you're saying that uh, just because things uh, suck, mm -hmm. uh, you have the ability today right now that's right okay it's your they, they that they they they're going to be good we're, there's good out of this and we're going to leave the suck part behind and just concentrate on the good stuff and it works that's right i think yeah. one of the most exciting messages i give is the fact and i ask my audience when did your old life end one second ago so when did your new life begin one second ago so do the math, 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day. In one 24-hour period, all of us have got 86,400 new opportunities for a new life every single day. Hmm. All we have to do is choose to take them. And our brain says, oh, okay, is it true? Don't care. All I care is what you tell me. I get excited. <laughs> and you should, for good reason, I can see. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, in fact, I want to know a whole lot more. I've just tapped into your book, uh, and, and it looks fascinating. I'm mm -hmm. sorry I haven't had a chance to read it all. Oh, yeah. um, but we'll tell people later on how they can get your book. And, and I can see why you're a popular lecturer. Mm -hmm. And um, and why you've sold thousands and thousands of uh, copies of your book, but I, really what I'd like to do is go back in time a little bit because you've only been doing this for about ten years. Ten years, twelve years actually. Yeah. And and uh, was it age sixty two when you 62 started? Sixty two. All right. So at sixty two, what happened? What happened? And, and you, yeah, you were yeah. you found yourself out of work, and okay. that must have been scary. What? It, well, First what happened was I got my master's when I was 55 because I've always wanted to teach. So I got my master's in information systems, began teaching at various universities, and I found myself teaching beginning classes, how to take, how to take studies, how to take exams, etc. because I've been studying psychology for over 30, and because psychology is interesting to me. So I found myself teaching for around 20 years at various universities, and then... When I was 62, I got let go. Wow. Terrible at the beginning, at the beginning of that, the great, yeah. yeah, at the beginning of the Great Recession, where oh. everyone was being let go and out of let go. There I was without a job, devastated because I was teaching stuff that I love. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, I developed this wonderful message that I just shared with you in colleges. And so I said, you know what? If college students can hear this, I bet seniors, and I hate the word senior, I'd like to call this, um, well, there's another word for it, which I'll, I'll share with you in a second. 
But I went down to the nearest senior center and I said, you know what? I had this wonderful message. I bet your people could love it. And she said, well, let's give it a shot. It's really a, a, a 10 hour course. Let's just do the first three. So I began sharing this course at the senior center on a Tuesday. And by the second week, they all went down to her office and they, they cornered her and they said, you can't let them finish next week. You need to have them do it the whole time. And she came back and he said, I know you might, we're not paying you anything, but could you do it? I said, absolutely. So I did it. And then all the other senior senators in Oma County said, can't you do it here? And I did. And then senior retirement facilities began asking me to do the same thing and they began paying me. <laughs> and then people began saying, where's your book? Where's your book? Where's your book? What book? Don't you have a book? Well, yes, I've written two college textbooks on computer software. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have to write a book about this because this is so wonderful. And you, it's, you, you just have to write it. So I wrote the book. And this is way back before um, self-publishing. So you had to make money to do it. I wrote the book and uh, made it. And it got sold like crazy. And as now it's in, I think it's its fourth, fourth version or something like that. And the book basically is a summation of what I'm saying and is so excited. And now I get to travel all around the world and people are paying me to do it. And, and here you are, here you are, 10 years later, 12 years later, 60, 72, approximately? 63, 73. 73. And, and you've got a brand new career you never thought of and you're making money when most people are worried about uh, how right. much interest am I getting on my bonds? Let me tell you how it really started, though. I got laid off. I came home. I was devastated. Mary, my wife of 50 years, came in, walked up the stairs, sat opposite me at our breakfast room table. She knew something was wrong. And I told her I had just been let go. She looked at me for the longest time. She was very quiet. And she said, Steve, something wonderful is going to happen here. Oh, how? I don't know. But something great is going to happen to you. What she chose to do is to make a positive. That was her choice. That's why this is so exciting. Because when we make that choice, the brain just says, oh, okay. And then it looks for ways to make it positive. Wow. The initial title for my book was Making Your Mind Your Mentor. They changed it to Making Your Mind Magnificent. I like my title better. A mentor, John and Art, is simply someone who sees more than you see in yourself. That's what your brain can become your bestest, bestest, bestest friend. For the first 42 years of our life, we hate each other. Now we just laugh at each other. We have such a good time. Wow. That's, that's a great story. So to, uh, what do you recommend, because you went through one of the most devastating things people go through. When you, when you lose your job, you know, there's, I always look at it this way, there's that, innate human animal response that says, oh my God, I'm going to oh die. My God, oh my God. I, yeah. How do I get food? Yeah. It, is a, it is a visceral, can be very physical response to mm -hmm. an emotional situation because mm -hmm. it's it's life and death. I mean, yes. in, in, a, in a sense, you know, yes. if, I can't, if I can't get money, yeah. I can't buy food, I can't pay the rent, I'm going to yeah. be on the street. So yeah. how did how did you deal with that besides your wife's support and positivity? Let me share with you the work of, of learn of a person by the name of Dr. E.P. Seligman of the University of, of Pennsylvania who wrote Learned Optimism, and it's also in my book. When optimists have to deal with really, 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 really hard stuff, they do three things. Number one, they isolate it. They say, okay, I'm out of a job, but that's not the only thing that's happened to me. I live in Sonoma County, one of those beautiful places in the world. Mary and I have been married for 45 years. We have two daughters whose husband loved them more than we do, which we never thought could be possible. So what we decided is we decided, even though I'm out of a job, 
And that's very true. I'm not going to only look at that. I'm not going to allow that to be an umbrella over the rest of our lives. And that was a decision we had to make. Was it a one-time decision? Of course not. We had to say it many, many times to each other. But over time, here's what's getting so excited. The more you make that decision, the more your brain rewires itself and the easier it has become to decide that again. Number one. Number two, what Dr. Sullivan discovered is that optimists basically say life is a moving picture. Life is always, always changing. They temporalize it. They say what's true today may not be, in fact, will not be true tomorrow. And it's going to be very different. And what we're going to lock on to is we're going to say, okay, even though I'm not sure what's going to be in the future, I'm going to lock on to something wonderful happening, which is what Mary did. Yeah. Number three, this is really important too. Optimists say stuff happens. There's a better word for it, but I won't use it. <laughs> and it's nobody's fault. When we sit blaming ourselves, all the negative stuff goes in. We simply say, okay, yes, I made some mistakes, but just because I have failed doesn't mean I'm a failure. Thomas Edison was asked how it felt to fail 999 times looking for the film of the light bulb. He said, I did not fail 999 times. I simply found 999 ways it didn't work. Yeah. And that's what your listeners need to hear. We're not making mistakes. We're just finding things that don't work. <laughs> and that's wonderful. Because yeah. that's how we grow. That's how we learn. That's how we change. In fact, the primary element that holds us back from learning and growing and changing is what we say to ourselves. The what a primary wonderful, element wonderful, is wonderful what message. we say to ourselves. So, so uh, Steve, uh, first of all, for all our listeners out there who might find themselves uh, after 50 uh, uh, facing a layoff or uh, wh whatever reasons they're separated from their income, uh, uh, now they don't have to be married to Mary Campbell. Okay, that was your, <laughs> that was your secret. Uh, That's right. Right. And they may not be able to reach her and she may be on a listed phone number, but they have you. Uh, <laughs> they have me. But, uh, and they have uh, the Mary Campbell method, which is uh, uh, something good is going to happen out something of Something good is going to come out of this. Certainly, yes. every second of the day, there's an opportunity for something good to happen. So everything is new. Yeah. Right, everything is new. But um, in your career now, of the last 12 years, uh, and you've uh, you you not only uh, sell the books and you speak to larger audiences, but you also do individual coaching. Is that not correct? Yes, I do. I do individual coaching, and I have an online seminar that's available to your listeners at a special price of only forty nine dollars. Okay, where, where can they find out about that? Yeah. Where can they find okay. out? Is there a website to go to? Actually, you can email me, and I'll send you information. Okay, so what is the email address you'd like email to Email is Stephen C, S T E V E N C, at sbcglobal.net. Okay. And by emailing me, I will give you that special discount. Plus, Excellent. I do coaching. Okay, but here's and, my, my question is, uh, and uh, this will be up on the screen for people to see. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the last 12 years, of your, particularly of your coaching, where you could, you have individual without revealing anybody's identity. Is there anything you've helped them do to change their lives, whether it be uh, get a new job, start a new profession, uh, uh, lose weight? What, what can, can you give us two or three examples? Uh, of, sure. Of probably your, the, the best illustrations to give people an idea of how this could work for them. Let me tell you about Rick. I met Rick when I was giving this series of seminars for many, many years for DAC, the Drug Abuse Alternative Center for Drug Addicts. Rick came up to me after one of my presentations. He was really, really angry. He's a very, very big person, very big and very muscular and all. And he said, I'm really angry at you, Mr. Campbell. Why? Because all of this is baloney. I've been through all these programs and none of it work. And this isn't going to work for me. And I looked at him and I said, you know, Rick, you know why it's not going to work for you? 
because that's what you're saying. When you say it's not going to work for me, you're absolutely correct. It's not. And he got teary eyed. And he's, I said to him, the bottom line is what you're saying. And you can replace that, not change it. Don't try to change it because it's too hard to change, but replace it with, I can do this. I'm a new person. I've got the new life. And he went through the program and I saw him a couple months later at Safeway. And he, as soon as he saw me, he went burst out of the safety doors. Now this guy was about six foot four and I'm six foot. And I said, oh my God, he's found me. He's going to kill me. <laughs> Came over, picked me up and I'm 200 pounds, put me down. And he said, you wouldn't believe what's going to happen. What's happened to you, Mr. Campbell? I said, what happened? He said, well, I went through your program and then I got hired at Safeway to take care of their meats and vegetables. And they're throwing all this stuff away, driving me crazy. I love Excel, so I created a program for them through Excel, which they're thinking of automating, and it helped. It has saved them thousand dollars through stuff that they're not having to throw away. It started, however, with Rick saying, "I can do this. Hmm. I'm doing it now." And the brain says, "Yes, you are." And then it found a way. Let me give you another story. I taught math at the University of San Francisco. And a student came to out, out my office out, after the first day of class, sat down. She was very, very shy. She said, Mr. Kemmel, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're my professor because I'm a C student in math. I said, what do you mean, sir? She said, I've never gotten above a C in math test, so I'm a C student. And I said, well, I used to be that way, so let me work with her. So I worked with her. She got an A in the first midterm. I gave her the test. And she absolutely freaked out. She said, <gasps> and then she said, oh, Mr. Campbell, this is a mistake. I said, what do you mean, Sue? She said, I have never gotten above the scene of math test. You must have made a mistake. And I said, I didn't, Sue. This is a genuine A. So then she looked at it longer. I'll never forget this. She looked at it longer, and her face just lit up. And she said, oh. Do you know what this means? And of course, now I'm getting real excited. So I sat down next to her and I said, of course, I want you to tell me, what does this mean, Sue? And she said, oh, this means, Mr. Campbell, that when I flunk the next test, I can still maintain my C. <laughs> I said, Sue, just get an A in every test. She said, oh, I can't. Why? What was her answer? I'm a C student. And that's exactly what happened. She flunked the next test. She got a C in the course. So I sat down with her. I said, Sue, what would have happened if you would flunk this first test? Do you know what she said without a moment's hesitation? She said, easy. I would have said like crazy to get A in the next test. I'd have to maintain my C. I say, Sue, just get A in every test. She said, I can't. Why? I'm a C student. I'm just too old. I've always been this way. This is the way I was raised. This is where I'm stuck. I just can't get through this. This is just too hard. This is the way I am. Or, 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 let's go back. When did your old life end? One second ago. When did it be the new life begin? One second ago. And you have 86,000 new lives every single day nothing in life is wasted unless you say it is and when you say that the brain says wow i was on my way to work one morning when i was teaching i was waiting for the light to change and the kid came up in a very very fancy car I looked at my little toyota and i knew what was going to happen the light changed he went peeing out in front of me Roaring north on 101, passing everyone with this new fancy car. As I watched this, 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 um, this whole scenario, I had this epiphany. How many cars are running in front of him? Millions. How many cars are behind him? Millions. So maybe it's not a matter of how fast you get there. Maybe it's a matter of you're going in the right direction. But listen, even when we're going the right direction, sometimes we just run out of gas. Sometimes we get a flat tire. Sometimes we even lose our way. 
But you know what? You can buy some more gas. You can replace the tire. You can get a map. And what's so wonderful about our brain is it just simply says, oh, okay. Is it true? Don't care. All I care about is what you tell me. You say it, I believe it. You lock on to it, you know what I will do. I'll do everything I can to make it true in your life. Wow. Well, with that, uh, I think I'm going to ask you, Steve, to repeat your uh, email address so that people can find out more about the book. And uh, I'll put it out on a slide uh, while you're speaking here. And um, uh, because I think this is a, a lot of people are going to find uh, what you've had to say important and want to do some follow up. So what's that best contact information for you again? Stephen C. S. T. E. V. E. N. C. At SBCglobal.net. Or they can call me. And that's at 707. 480-5007. And Steve, give us your website too, because I think website it's website is stephenrcampbell.com. Yep. Stephen S T E V E N R Campbell dot com. Yeah. There's a lot of good information on your website. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, this has been great. Thank you so much for not only the lessons and how our brains work. We've got to do more of this, by the way. Yes, I would love to. There's so um, much. Oh, yeah. And it applies to everything in life. But also, thank you for sharing your story, your personal story. Mm -hmm. That's so many what of makes us, it real. Yeah. yeah, so many of us goes through something very similar. And it's a devastating thing at the, in their 60s mm -hmm. um, to be out of a job because people, let's face it, are really not ready for retirement at 60 no. or 62. No, you know. yeah, yeah. Uh, it all so comes down you. to what we're thinking. You're welcome. Yep. Thank you for I, sharing that. It, uh, we appreciate that. I know our audience will respond to it. Um, so we'll see you again. We'll see okay, you again. Yeah, thank I hope you. you do. And Great. you know what? Will you please thank Mary? Because I without, every day. without Mary, I do every day. Okay. Who, yeah. John and I will be talking to each other. <laughs> well, we can't have that. I do Steve, every day. See you, see you soon. Thank see you. you. Bye-bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.